بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نون نون by the pen and what they inscribe according to 12th century muslim mystic and scholar ibn arabi the noon a semicircle with a dot above or to the side is the visible part of a whole circle alluding to a spiritual or hidden noon on the upper part of the same circle therefore the noon is shaped like an inkwell into which the pen draws the ink and writes or where the end of a compass would be to draw the noon let us draw from the inkwell and begin our journey of iterations dot by dot in taking a line for a walk Laura U. Marx offers that, quote, the rhythm of writing is informed by the calligrapher's breath. In drawing of a line, breath is suspended between life and death, unquote. Here is a page from Henna Design's Modern Variety Pack by Aika Khan and Somnath Pot. Using your input device, be it a mouse or touchpad, I encourage you to follow the lines of this digital Henna Design. Are you mindful of the invisible traces you leave as you drag your cursor across the screen? Similar to a calligrapher, henna, or tattoo artist, you too suspend your breath between life and death as your cursor travels across this digital hand. And in this way, pixel by pixel, you exchange digital gifts of trust and touch. Another artist exploring this new age of tradition in collaboration with others is Dr. Azra Khamisa, whose brand pays homage to the varied and nuanced histories and futures that our bodies and minds carry using this art form. For Ramadan 2020, two women artists from Dubai, Shama Bohaza and Nur Flehan, contributed to Azra in the capacity of creating limited edition stencils. In abstracting the geometric characteristic of sadhu weaving, Buhazza extends this UNESCO intangible heritage practice into the Latin alphabet, thereby moving away from fact and binary, and inviting users beyond the assumed language and geography to participate in the art of henna. Likewise, Flehan plucks designs out of Levantine embroidery patterns, infusing them with her own illustration style to celebrate her roots and ancestry. Their method of isolating aspects of traditional sentimental aesthetics to reintroduce them as individualized symbols underlines the boundless characteristic of henna as an art form, and more importantly, the role of the embodier themselves who create infinite iterations through their application and reapplication of henna using these reusable sticker stencils. Region by region, within each culture, henna designs vary. Migration by migration and application by application, these cultures fuse. Thus, pinning the origin of henna to a single geographical point becomes almost pointless. Next, we draw from our inkwell to tell the familiar story of our heartbeats, contraction and expansion. In Call for Prayer Morse by Yunus Baba Ali, the verbal verses of the Adhan, or Call to Prayer, are overwritten by Morse, a universal language of emergency. Each word is reduced to an auditory equivalent of dots and dashes. Used to transmit signals, this sonic pulse warns us of heightened surveillance and loss of spirituality. Dot by dot, dash by dash, beep by beep, complexities are condensed to a point from which infinite iterations can be drawn. Similarly, the universe is sustained atom by atom, motion by motion, Kun faya kun, be and it is. Like the pen that draws too much ink, leaving drops in its path towards its final destination, we too write our own histories by leaving our traces as dotted lines, sometimes intentional and other times involuntary. In the works of Leila Tara H., the very inkwell from which she draws to create her contemporary Indo-Persian miniature paintings is made from hand-gathered pigments like crushed red London bricks. When feeling displaced, we engage in exchanges in presence and absence of structure and improvisation. 
Brushstroke by brushstroke, the artist embraces this ambiguity using tensions as opportunity, accepting these moments in between as breathing third spaces. Through her play series, Leila Tara H. echoes Mikhail Bakhtin's assertions that, quote, each of us occupies a situation in existence, and for the time we occupy such space, it is ours and ours alone, unquote. In rethinking home as being in a particular moment in space-time, the artist visually conveys the pixels we select at any given time, manipulating portions of ourselves. We push and we pull and we play in the playground for new orders and subjectivities to no longer be contained. Folio by folio, the artist demonstrates the lifelong performance of longing to belong, of migration and placemaking. Artist and architect Ozo de Rolizade drags a specific tree out from the grid of her mind, one that occupies a space somewhere between her memories of the Persian gardens and Persian miniatures, and drops it into the terrain of a gallery. To encounter it is to witness a split second in her visual memory, captured forever as a magnified sculpture. The artist speaks the language of the digital, the voxel graphic specifically, to render this tree from the virtual reality of her mind into the physical reality of the gallery. Voxel by voxel, using wood and wool, Rolizade renders new possibilities of being and becoming. Hussein Sheikha's film, Fragments Between the Rivers, uses source material drawn from footage sent from his family in the south of Iraq, with others extracted from online video sharing websites and social media platforms. He also weaves in Iraqi music corresponding to each of the four chapters in his film. On the technical, aesthetic, and narrative capacities of animation, multidisciplinary artist Umber Majid offers that it, quote, allows disjointed imagery and disjointed narrative to have a place and to be experienced within its disjointedness." Unquote. This film becomes a digital conversation with and through the carpet, wherein Sheikha virtually weaves together seemingly competing notions and geographies into wistful pixel-based animations. Pixel by pixel and music note by note, his stock imagery and archival materials evoking the same hues as in the blue screen of death come together to signal the process of starting over, inherent in migration and placemaking. This same process lays the foundation for Ramazan John's installation, where he, too, joins puzzling notions that coexist in the pain of existence. John turns the mirror onto those who are forced to migrate and others who are unable to. In either reality, whether contained or displaced, settled or fled, we project our selfhood onto fragments of our surroundings in hopes of rebooting our chance or geographical accident into destiny. Block by block, through concrete carpet hybrids, the artist shows us the paths paved when making houses into homes and spaces into places. Another artist, working with the very foundations that make up our understanding of placemaking and civilizations, is Afrofuturist Eko Nimako. Nimako uses 100,000 pieces of black Lego to place Kumbi Sala, an African metropolis at its height, a millennia into the future from when he created it. In so doing, he reimagines the role of the Ghana Empire and its trade routes by uplifting its role in promoting cultural diffusion and spreading Islam. Lego brick by brick, Nimako retells the story of Kumbi Sala and tells the story anew using the black Lego pieces as his brick and mortar for a new world. We circle back to the noon, where we drew into the inkwell and traced back, selected, played, wove, coded and decoded, assembled, disassembled and reassembled, leaving a dotted trail. Transcending geographies and linear notions of space-time, these artists echo the circularity of the noon, removing the horizon, allowing the land and sky to coalesce. Jameli Hassan's neon sculpture also sheds light on the Enlightenment journey in Sufism, where the way to God is inward through one's own soul. And through our journey, we circle back to ourselves 
reflecting inwards and deflecting outwards, mirroring each other.